Thank you, Daniel, for letting me use some of your images to edit here. I've never been to Iceland before, so I thank you for that. I love this church right here. We're starting out with this image right here, and we're going to end up with this image right here. So this is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a great ride. Stay tuned to the end. You're going to learn a lot of different tips and techniques. So without any further ado, let's get started. I brought this image in from Lightroom, just did some basic adjustments on it. Now I'm going to do some denoising on it. So I'm going to come up to Filter and Launch Topaz Denoise AI. I always like to use the Denoise AI model here. Now the image on the left is the before, the image on the after is the right. And it's in the auto detect settings mode. You can see there's a little bit of noise in there. Now I could come and take this noise and move it up some more to the right and get rid of this noise. But I think the building might get a little too smooth and I really love this new low light mode. This image, uh, ISO, I think around 2400, somewhere around there. So it's pretty high ISO. And so I'm just gonna turn on the uh, low light mode and show you the difference here. But see, it cleaned that right up. Even in the auto, it looks nice. And I don't believe I need to add any more, but it, it just does a beautiful job. And the sharpening, I'm just going to use the sharpening right here in Denoise AI. The sharpening is, is great. Uh, I might just bump that sharpening up just a little bit and see what we get here. Yeah, maybe just a little extra sharpening I think will do the trick. And that's really all we need. I'm going to click Apply. I went ahead and added a blank pixel layer here. Here's the little icon for it. Just click that. It gives you a blank pixel layer. I'm going to get my healing tool and make sure that you have sample all layers checked, okay? And I think we'll get rid of this little post right here. I don't know, I just think it could go away. And like that it goes away in this little post right here. Kind of annoying to me. Hey, we can make decisions to get rid of that. I'm just gonna right click this layer that I call remove objects and I'm just gonna merge down like that. I went ahead and duplicated the uh, Denoise AI layer and called it uh, Luminar 4 Sky Replacement. And now we're going to open up uh, Luminar 4 and replace that sky. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Creative tab here and come up to AI Sky Replacement, Sky Selection. And I came upon uh, Sunset, what is it, Sunset Clouds 1. And I thought, oh, that looks really nice. And right out of the gate, I think everything looks really good with it right there. And now what I'll do is go to AI Augmented Sky and let's put some birds in that sky. I think some birds will look nice. I think birds three. Yeah, that looks cool. I'm going to click a place object, move them around to where I think they should go. Maybe right around there, there. And I think they're too big. So we'll make them a little bit smaller and put them in a nice little flying area. Say like right there. It looks really good. I'm going to come back to the AI sky replacement real quick. I just want to pull the horizon down a little bit. So I'm just going to take the horizon position and just bump it a little bit down right there. I think that's that's nice. Now let's go to the essentials tab and why not add a little bit of AI enhance. Now inside here you have AI accent and AI sky enhancer. So let's do a little bit of AI accent. It does magical things to your image. So I'm not going to go too crazy but right there. A little bit of AI Sky Enhancer. And now I'm happy. I'll go ahead and click Apply and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. Let's see where we come from. So we've come from here and now we're here. And I'm really liking these results so far. I went ahead and duplicated the uh, Sky Replacement layer and called it Topaz Adjust AI. Because now we're going to launch Topaz Adjust AI and we'll do some more cool stuff to this image. The only thing I'm going to do here is click on HDR style. Now it'll look a little bit over the top, but what we'll do is we'll take care of that inside of Photoshop. So we're just going to let it right here and I'll show you some tricks in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and click apply. I'm coming down to my adjustment layers and choosing hue saturation. Now here's how I'm going to work on the colors in the sky. Okay. And on the foreground as well. So uh, make sure in this little menu section here, make sure you have auto select target adjustment tool selected. And that gives you this little eyedropper here. So you can click any one of the colors, click. And if you click and hold down with your mouse, left click and drag to the left, you'll decrease the color, drag to the right, you'll increase the color. No, it's only going to target the color that you've uh, selected there. See, so I can pull those blues back. I can come down to the uh, foreground here and pull this back a little bit here if that's a little too strong 
and maybe somewhere around in there. There's a little magenta here, so I'm going to click right here. And when I do, notice, notice it says reds right here. So I'm going to click and drag that to the left a little bit and just tame that down. Let's click right here. Here might be some magentas. Yeah, and see it says magentas right there. And so click and drag that a little bit to the left, and I can tone those magenta colors down a little bit. And, you know, just adjust it till it gets to the point that you really like. Let's take a look at the before and after. So here's the before and there's the after. Isn't that nice? It really, you know, can get it adjusted in for you. And if I wanted to add a little bit more red to this roof here, I could add another adjustment layer, a hue saturation. And again, I'll click on the roof and drag it to the right, bumping up those red tones. And this time I'm going to invert this mask and that's Command or Control I. And then I'll just get my paintbrush, B for the brush, and I'm painting, uh, let's paint with 100% opacity. I'm just typing my zero key to make that 100%. That's a shortcut. Make my brush a decent size here. Make sure I'm painting with white paint because it's a black hide all air mask. So I want to reveal this red. So I'm just going to paint in here like so. And on this door here, add a little bit of red saturation. Boost it up there a little bit on this building as well. Or not building. What am I saying building? Roof. Isn't this a cool little church here? Out in the middle of some field here it looks like. Okay, and if you felt you went too much, you can take the opacity and take, I'd take it the whole way off and then just build it up till it looks good to you. And I'm thinking maybe, yeah, right around there, like around a 70 now. Here's the before and here's the after. I'm going to take these three layers, Topaz Adjust AI, Hue Saturation, and Hue Saturation 2, put those all in a group, and you'll see why here in a second. So I'm going to hold my Shift key down. Hue Saturation 2 is already selected. I'm going to click on Topaz Adjust AI. That selects all three. I'm going to right-click and choose Group from Layers. And let's name this Adjust AI. If I could spell, it would be great. Adjust AI. Okay. And the reason I did that was now I can uh, come to this Adjust AI group right here. And if I open it up, you'll see there's all my adjustments in there. So if I shut this uh, layer off, this is what it looked like when it came out of Luminar uh, with the sky replacement in the Enhance AI. And now this is what it looks like after Adjust AI. Okay, so it looks pretty good. And if I think I went too strong, and this is why I put this in a group, I can take the opacity, take it the whole way off. You see me, I do this all the time because... Usually I'm a little too heavy handed on things and the opacity is really nice. It's your fail safe. You can, if you went too strong, you can pull it back. So I might even take it back to like around a 60 or somewhere right around there. Now let's click it off. Here's before and here's after. I'm happy with that and now we can move on. The next step, I, I'm going to give you an added bonus here. I'm going to use some Nick software. I want to add some glamour glow to the sky. It gives you that nice, soft, ethereal, like Orton type effect. Now, honestly, I could use Luminar for that. Uh, I could use the Mystical Filter or the Orton effect. But I really like glamour glow, too. And I, I, I use all my different software. So I'm just going to introduce this to you. Right now, if I come up here to Filter, and you'll notice all my filters are grayed out. And the reason being, let me open up this group. The last adjustment I made was a, an adjustment layer, okay? So you can't take an adjustment layer into uh, Nick software or any kind of plugin, actually, for that matter. So I have to pull all these layers together, so I'm going to stamp it together. I'll put the shortcuts up on the screen for Mac and Windows, how to make a stamp layer here. I'm going to call this Nick Glamour Glow. And now I'm going to come up here to Filter and launch my Nick. Color Effects Pro 4. And here we are in Color Effects Pro 4 by Nick. And look at all these filters in here. I'm not sure how many filters are in here, but there's a ton. But here's one of my favorites, Glamour Glow. So I'm going to click that, and here's Glamour Glow. And it's real easy to do. There's a glow here, so I'm just going to bump up the glow. And you can adjust the saturation, but I'm kind of happy with the saturation right there. And then you have Glow Warmth. You can make it warmer or cooler, whatever you like. And then you can adjust your shadows, like if I move it to the left, it'll give me more glow to my shadows. If I move it to the right, it'll give me less of that glow on my shadows. It'll protect them a bit. And also with the highlights, if I move it to the left, it'll give me more glow on my highlights. Move it to the right, less glow on the highlights. So I want a good bit of glow up on my highlights. 
There's a really great feature inside of Nick software, and that is something called control points, and it's found right here. See the plus and the minus? If I wanted to remove the glamour glow, say, from this building here, the church, I'll click a negative control point, and watch, I'll just give it a click, and see it removes it from there. Now, if I hold the option or alt key down, that'll duplicate that, and then I can put in all the different points. And see that circle? That's called a circle of influence, and you can adjust that circle by moving this to the right and left. Someday I'll do a full tutorial on Nick software, but for now, all you need to know is I'm removing the effect from this building here. I could remove it from the foreground here too, but I'm not gonna do that because I can use a mask in Photoshop to get rid of that. So basically what I wanna do is just have that glow in the sky. So if we come up here and click compare, there's the before and there's the after. But see that, it just adds that dreamy glow to the sky. Now all I have to do is click okay. I want to point something out right here. See, this is that layer I made, remember, and I named it Nick Glamour Glow. I don't really need this because now I don't need it. I did need it to send it into Nick because remember, my filters are grayed out when I clicked on here, okay, because I didn't have a pixel layer there. But this layer right now is actually not serving any purpose. So we can go ahead and just delete it by clicking the trash can because Nick, whenever you launch their software, gives you a, it duplicates your last layer. And when it comes back into Photoshop, it will rename it with whatever filter that you used inside of its software, which is a really nice feature in Nick software. I'm coming up to this Glamour Glow layer and selecting it. And I'll just click on a layer mask right here. And I'll just get a brush with some black paint. Typing my X key to get black paint, making my brush on the larger size here with a nice feathering on it. And I'm just going to paint it off of the foreground here. Remember, it's already off the building because I use those control points. Control points are something that is proprietary to Nick software. I really like that technology. But they're the only ones that have it. So now let's uh, see the before and after. So here's the before and here's the after. But see, just that nice little uh, ethereal, dreamy look to the, to the sky. And if I felt I went too much again, I could pull the opacity back. But uh, I think I like it. Let's just try moving it off. I always got to experiment. I'm going to leave it up to about a 90. So here's the before and here's the after. It just adds that little dreamy glow to the sky. And it really works well for this church. We're almost done. I stamped my layers together here again here and called it Topaz Studio 2 because now I'm going to go to Topaz Studio 2 and I'll add two finishing touches. I'm going to add filter and get precision contrast. I really love this filter for adding a little bit of extra pop to my image in certain parts. I'm going to use it locally. I'm going to take the micro contrast and I'm only looking at the church because that's where I'm going to add it. I just want to add a little bit of extra detail to the church. See like the roof and that. And so that's micro. I'm going to add a little bit of low. It breaks your con contrast. It breaks it down into micro, low, medium, and high, which is really cool. So you can really get a super defined contrast adjustment. Something like that. That is all I'm going to do there. And the other thing I want to do is bump up my midtones. They also give you lighting here, which is really nice. So I'm going to take my midtones up a little bit. I just want to lighten the church up. I don't really care how the rest of the image looks because I'm only going to mask this effect onto the church. And I'm going to bump the saturation up to bring the reds out a little bit on the church. So a little bit of saturation, just looking at the church roof, something like that. And now I'll come up to the layer mask and click it and I'll invert it. These three little dots click there and click invert. And now we're going to get a brush and make sure your transparency is the whole way to the right which when you do, it makes you a white paint swatch here. And now we'll adjust the radius of our brush. I'm gonna take my softness and bring it in down to around like a 30 somewhere, somewhere in that area. And now what I'll do is just simply paint that adjustment. And I have edge aware turned on, so it'll just grab the edges here. I'm just gonna paint it on the building here. I don't have to be super careful here because that edge wear technology will grab those edges which is really nice. I'll come up so high and then I'll get a smaller brush and finish off the top. If I miss a little spot in here, it won't make that big of a deal. And now let's get a little smaller radius and I'll just paint the rest of it right up in here like so. All right. And now let's take a look and you can see how I grab the edges there. That edge wear technology is really great. 
So let's click on the before, this little eye right here. There's the before and there's the after. See, just a little bit of a contrast bump. And it lightened up the building as well. And if I went too far, I can click on precision contrast and I can take this, uh, not saturation, but the midtones. Maybe just take it off a little bit if I went too much. So now let's see a before and after. Here's a before and here's the after. And this just makes our uh, viewer look more at that church. Because to me, the church is really what this is all about. The adjustment that I just made right now is very important. Uh, it's called a localized adjustment or a local adjustment. And it'll really set your images apart from other people's images. Next, I'll add another filter, one I don't use too often, and that's this flare filter right here, but it's really nice. And what I'll do is, I'm not going to really go into detail about this, but you have different types of flares. And I see this light right here, see this light? What if I add a little bit of a light flare to this, and gives it a, it'll give it a little bit of a glow? And you have different types of, uh, of glows that you can pick here, or flares. I'm going to leave it on standard. And right now it's set to add, so see my little green cross here? I'm going to come here and give it a click right on that light. Now, isn't that great? <laughs> no, believe me, that's not great. So what we want to do is we want to come down to, I don't use this that often, but see where it says intensity, and we're going to pull that intensity way back like that. See that how it gives it a nice little glow? And I'm going to pull it back a little bit more. I just want a little bit of a glow on that light. And if that's still too much, I can come up to the opacity. I'll take it the whole way off. And let's just build it up slowly. Just so that light looks kind of natural. Just a little bit of a glow. Let's click the eye. Here's the before. And here's the after. And if you wanted to, you can take a, a layer mask and... Let's paint. Let's grab a brush. Paint with black paint. And let's get a real small brush here. And all I'll do is I'm just going to paint a little bit of that off right up in here. So I don't have any of that glow up there. So I, I just want that glow to be onto the door itself, just like that. Just that little bit of glow. And again, here's the before and here's the after. Just a nice little glow. Again, these are the little things that will really set your images apart. So let's go ahead and click Accept if we're happy, and that will send us back into Photoshop. Let's go ahead and toggle this layer on and off. And remember, we only add a little bit of detail and lighten the front of the or lighten the church itself, and uh, added that little glow. So here's the before, and here's the after. And now our eye goes right into the church. And there's just one final thing I want to do, and that is to darken off the bottom of the image, and just slightly darken off the top. That closes off the top and bottom bottom of the image, keeping your viewer trained to the main focal point of the image. We'll come down to the adjustment layers and we'll get a curves adjustment layer. And I'll just slightly pull down on the curve on the mid-tones and just darken, darken the mid-tones a little bit. Now that darkens the whole image, but what we'll do is invert this layer mask. So that's Command or Control I to invert the layer mask. Now I'm going to get a nice big brush. Make sure I have my brush tool here. B for the brush tool. Make a nice big um, brush here with uh, very soft and 100% opacity and flow. And I'm just going to come down here at the bottom. Whoops, and make sure I'm painting with white paint. I was painting with black paint. Type X and that'll give you black paint or give you white paint. And just come across there like so. Now it's probably way too dark, but not a problem. And now I'm going to take my uh, opacity and take it down to about 30%. So I'm going to type the three key and come up to the very top here and just paint across like so. And that'll darken the top a little bit. And if I went too strong, I'll just take this opacity, let's take it the whole way off, and let's just build it up slowly, just so we darken that a little bit in there. Maybe around a 65. Now let me toggle on and off so you'll see what it's doing. See how it just darkens the top and bottom just a little bit? And it just keeps your eye trained into the center of the image, which is the main focal point of the image. And now let's have some fun. Let's see where we came from. So we started with this image right here, and we ended up with this image. So what a big difference. We have this beautiful sky, this church. I love it. I had a lot of fun with this image. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you learned a lot today. Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it.